Ever wondered how a single battleship could turn the tide of World War II? Discover the incredible war stories of the USS South Dakota as it fought some of the fiercest battles in the Pacific. USS South Dakota, BB-57, was a key American battleship during World War II. Built as the lead vessel of the South Dakota-class fast battleships, she was constructed in the 1930s amid the global naval rearmament that began when the Washington Naval Treaty broke down. South Dakota was the first American battleship designed after the mid-1930s, utilizing a treaty clause that allowed her to carry a powerful battery of 16-inch guns while maintaining a displacement close to the 35,000-ton limit. This treaty limitation led to some design compromises, such as cramped spaces, especially once additional anti-aircraft batteries and crew were added during the war. When South Dakota entered service in 1942, she was immediately sent to the South Pacific to support Allied forces during the Guadalcanal campaign. Not long after her arrival, she sustained damage from an accidental grounding on an uncharted reef, but she was quickly repaired. South Dakota then took part in some of the most intense naval engagements of the campaign, including the Battle of Santa Cruz and the Second Naval Battle of Guadalcanal. During the latter, she faced severe electrical issues that hindered her ability to engage effectively, resulting in her being targeted by numerous Japanese ships. Despite taking over two dozen hits, which primarily damaged her superstructure, her armor held firm and her buoyancy remained intact. After these engagements, she returned to the United States for repairs before briefly being deployed to strengthen the British home fleet in the Atlantic, where her role was to help protect convoys to the Soviet Union. By mid-1943, South Dakota was back in the Pacific, assigned to the Fast Carrier Task Force. Her primary duty here was to provide anti-aircraft protection for the carriers, which she did during multiple campaigns, including the Gilbert and Marshall Islands Campaign, the Mariana and Palau Islands Campaign, and the Philippines Campaign. During the battles of Iwo Jima and Okinawa in 1945, South Dakota again demonstrated her effectiveness in defending against enemy air attacks, even as kamikaze tactics became a prevalent threat. She also participated in shore bombardments, including attacks on Japanese industrial targets, as the Allies sought to weaken Japan's capability to continue the war. Following Japan's surrender in August 1945, South Dakota was part of the initial occupation of the country before returning to the United States later that year. The South Dakota-class battleships were notable for their compact and heavily armored designs, which made them formidable opponents. The decision to retain a displacement close to the original treaty limit led to innovative engineering solutions, resulting in ships that balanced firepower, armor, and speed. South Dakota herself measured 680 feet in length, had a beam of 108 feet, and displaced approximately 38,000 tons. She was powered by four shaft steam turbines capable of generating a top speed of 27.5 knots which made her a valuable asset to the fast carrier groups. Her armament included a main battery of nine 16-inch guns and a secondary battery of 16 5-inch guns, along with an ever-increasing number of anti-aircraft weapons to counter the evolving air threat. Throughout the war, these anti-aircraft batteries were continually upgraded, reflecting the increasing threat posed by Japanese aircraft, including kamikaze attacks. The ship's early wartime service began with her participation in the Guadalcanal Campaign, one of the pivotal early campaigns in the Pacific theater. When South Dakota arrived in the Pacific in 1942, the situation around Guadalcanal was dire for the Allies. Japanese forces were attempting to reinforce their troops on the island, and American forces were stretched thin. South Dakota joined Task Force 17 under Rear Admiral Willis Lee, and sailed to meet the Japanese. During her deployment, South Dakota engaged in the Battle of Santa Cruz in October 1942. In this battle, the Japanese sought to destroy the American carrier fleet, and South Dakota provided vital anti-aircraft support to protect the carriers. Her anti-aircraft gunners, though new to combat, shot down several attacking Japanese aircraft, helping to defend the damaged carrier USS Enterprise. 
Despite the heavy attacks, South Dakota emerged with relatively minor damage compared to other vessels. The ship's next major engagement, the Second Naval Battle of Guadalcanal in November 1942, proved to be one of her most challenging experiences. As Admiral Kondo's Japanese bombardment force approached Guadalcanal, South Dakota, accompanied by the battleship Washington and four destroyers, was sent to intercept. In the ensuing night battle, South Dakota experienced severe electrical failures that affected her radar and gunnery systems, leaving her temporarily deaf, dumb, and blind in the face of enemy fire. As the Japanese warships concentrated their fire on her, she was illuminated by burning American destroyers and took over 20 hits, most of which struck her upper works. Despite the damage, South Dakota's vital systems remained operational, and her thick armor protected her from any critical hits. Meanwhile, the battleship Washington was able to maneuver undetected and delivered devastating fire on the Japanese battleship Kirishima, forcing the Japanese to retreat. Following repairs in the United States, South Dakota rejoined the fleet in 1943 and was assigned to the Atlantic to support the British home fleet. Here, she played a defensive role, safeguarding Arctic convoys to the Soviet Union against the threat posed by the German Navy including the battleship Tirpitz. Her time in the Atlantic was relatively uneventful compared to her Pacific service, but it underscored her versatility as a capital ship capable of operating in different theaters. By mid-1943, South Dakota was back in the Pacific, joining the fast carrier task forces that became the spearhead of the American offensive across the Central Pacific. Operating alongside other battleships, such as her sister ship Alabama, and the older North Carolina class, South Dakota's primary mission was to protect the carriers from air attack. During the campaigns in the Gilbert and Marshall Islands, she provided crucial anti-aircraft cover as carrier-based aircraft struck Japanese positions. The battleships also conducted shore bombardments, targeting Japanese fortifications and airfields. In these operations, South Dakota's powerful guns and her crew's growing experience in naval gunfire support proved valuable in softening enemy defenses ahead of amphibious landings. The Mariana and Palau Islands campaign in 1944 marked another significant phase of South Dakota's service. The campaign included the largest carrier battle of the war, the Battle of the Philippine Sea, often referred to as the Great Mariana's Turkey Shoot, due to the massive losses suffered by Japanese naval aviation. South Dakota was part of Task Force 58, which repelled multiple waves of Japanese aircraft. During one attack, a Japanese dive bomber scored a direct hit on South Dakota's deck, causing casualties and damage. Despite the hit, her anti-aircraft guns continued to fire effectively, and the crew's resilience allowed the ship to remain in action. The American victory in this battle effectively ended the Japanese Navy's ability to conduct large-scale carrier operations. In late 1944, South Dakota participated in the Philippines campaign, including the epic Battle of Lake Gulf, the largest naval battle in history. South Dakota was part of Admiral Halsey's Third Fleet, which was lured away from the Leyte invasion area by a Japanese decoy force of aircraft carriers. This maneuver left the invasion fleet vulnerable to attack by Japanese battleships and cruisers. Despite this, the timely intervention of small escort carriers and destroyers, coupled with the eventual return of Halsey's battleships, prevented a Japanese breakthrough. South Dakota, along with her sister ships, steamed south at high speed to assist, but by the time they arrived, the Japanese had already been repelled. Nevertheless, South Dakota's presence underscored the importance of battleships in providing a mobile, heavily armed reserve for the carrier task forces. In 1945, South Dakota continued to support carrier operations, providing anti-aircraft cover during the battles of Iwo Jima and Okinawa. These were among the bloodiest campaigns of the Pacific War, with Japanese forces determined to resist to the last man. During the Okinawa campaign, the Japanese launched hundreds of kamikaze attacks against the Allied fleet. South Dakota's anti-aircraft gunners were kept busy day and night, shooting down several attacking aircraft and helping to protect the carriers and other ships in the task force. She also took part in shore bombardments, using her big guns to target Japanese positions inland, providing fire support for the troops fighting ashore. 
In July 1945, as the war neared its end, South Dakota was part of a series of naval bombardments against the Japanese home islands. These bombardments were intended to weaken Japan's industrial base and erode its capacity to resist an invasion. South Dakota, along with other battleships and cruisers, shelled industrial targets in Kamaishi and Hamamatsu, marking the first time that Japan's home islands were subjected to bombardment by heavy naval artillery. The destruction caused by these bombardments, combined with the devastating effects of air raids and the atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, helped bring the war to a conclusion. Following Japan's surrender in August 1945, South Dakota entered Tokyo Bay as part of the occupation force. She was present for the formal surrender, surrender ceremony aboard the USS Missouri on September 2, 1945, which marked the official end of World War II. After the war, South Dakota returned to the United States, where she was celebrated as one of the most decorated battleships of the war. She was eventually decommissioned in 1947 and placed in reserve. Although there were plans to modernize her and possibly convert her into a guided missile battleship, these plans were ultimately deemed too costly and South Dakota was sold for scrap in 1962. However, her legacy lives on in the form of a memorial in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, where parts of the ship, including a 16-inch gun and her bell, are preserved for future generations to honor her service. The story of USS South Dakota is a testament to the evolution of naval warfare during World War II. Initially designed under the constraints of interwar naval treaties, she and her sister ships represented a compromise between firepower, protection, and speed. Despite these compromises, South Dakota proved to be a formidable warship capable of withstanding significant damage while delivering powerful blows to the enemy. Her participation in nearly every major naval campaign in the Pacific, from Guadalcanal to Okinawa, highlights her versatility and the critical role that battleships continued to play even in an era increasingly dominated by air power. The courage and resilience of her crew, particularly during moments of crisis like the Second Naval Battle of Guadalcanal, serve as a powerful reminder of the human element that underpins all great military achievements.